Hi, I'm Bill Selleck. I'm going to walk you through the geometry strand from the NCTM standards. So here are five standards. This video covers the third strand, geometry. There are four standards. The first one we're going to take a look at is analyzing properties of two and three dimensional geometric shapes. So grab a piece of paper. You might need to pause me for this. And I want you to draw a line down the middle. On the left side, I'd like you to draw a triangle. On the right side, please draw a rectangle. And just about everybody, probably you, and probably other people you would ask, when they're asked to draw a triangle, draw an equilateral triangle. When they're asked to draw a rectangle, they draw a long, skinny rectangle that looks like a door. Sometimes that's rotated 90 degrees. But these are the two shapes that we tend to think of when we think about a triangle and a rectangle. Most of this has to do with how we were taught about geometric shapes. In reality, there's way, 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 way more shapes than just that one equilateral triangle and that one long skinny rectangle. We need to keep that in mind as we're teaching our students, and we definitely need to keep that in mind when we're giving examples of these geometric shapes. So the first thing students need to be able to do is just recognize a shape so looking at a shape and saying, that's a triangle. If you're teaching them what a triangle is, don't just show them an equilateral triangle, show them every possible triangle. Give them the opportunity to create every possible triangle. But typically when I start a lesson about shape recognition, I do not pick an equilateral triangle because that's what they see all the time. So you know what that one is. Do you know what this shape is? I'll help you out, it's nine sides. That shape is none other than... Everybody at the party is a mini... So, that's the nanagon. If you're teaching your students about shapes, uh, that is an awesome way to teach them. Find a, a fun video. That's They Might Be Giants, by the way. Before students understand what a three-dimensional shape is, you need to be able to show them a variety of things. One-dimensional shape is just a point, a point in space. It doesn't have length, width, or height just a point. Two-dimensional has width and height. Three-dimensional also has a depth. So as you see, one-dimensional is a point, two-dimensional is a triangle, and that three-dimensional shape is a triangular prism. When you're teaching about different shapes, when you're introducing a shape, give as many examples as you can. Please do not just draw that rectangle on the right and say, this is a rectangle. Students will think that's only a rectangle, that's the only rectangle they will ever associate with rectangles. But if you give them a variety, they're going to look at that and say, all right, let me figure out what a rectangle is. And if you see that second shape, a lot of you would say, that's a square, not a rectangle. But if you think about what a square is, it's just a special rectangle. Rectangle has to have two sides that are parallel, two opposing sides that are parallel, and has to have four 90 degree angles. That square has all of those attributes, but it just so happens that all four sides also are the same length. So a square is just a special rectangle. And if you say a square is not a rectangle, by the time your students get to be in, uh, in high school, oh my goodness, they're going to have a, a tough time with geometry because a square is a rectangle. It's just a special rectangle. And you know, start that as, as young as you can with the students. One way I like to uh, introduce shapes is just to tape them to a door. So every day when I walk in, just like you're seeing, I would rotate those shapes a little bit. A square, a rectangle, a triangle doesn't have to be always the same shape. Just rotate it five degrees, tape it to a door. Every day it's a little bit different. And students see, oh, it's still a rectangle. And if they don't get that, just lean to your right and you know your turn your head's turned 90 degrees am i still mr selick yes all right this is still a rectangle doesn't matter what angle it's at it's still the same shape and that's a big thing for students if you've ever seen a poster similar to this buy two of them you can see that triangle in the bottom left corner has a, a little bit of velcro cut one of the posters out now it's an interactive poster it's not just, look at this, it's let me pull them all off and then I can put them back up. If I go backwards for just a moment, 
you'll see if you're going to make your own, I would recommend making your own with the same colors. That way students, if I go back forward, don't look at it and say, well, that's blue, so it's a square, but it's yellow, so it's a rectangle. They don't get confused with color and shape. If it's all the same color, then they're focused on only the shape. Ask them why a shape is what it is. If you're looking for open-ended questions, this is about as good as it gets. Why is that a square? Have them explain to you why it is what it is. Constructing, building two-dimensional shapes is a big part of analyzing the characteristics and understanding what, uh, what these shapes are. So grab some straws. I like in and out straws. Kids go in and out, and then they're playing with them, and, uh, and the lesson's that much more fun. Have them build two-dimensional shapes with straws. It's a great way to have them build without having to just draw a picture. Let's talk about some attributes. Corner. A corner is where three, it's on, only on a three-dimensional shape, it's where three faces meet. An edge, if you think about just like a, a tissue box, it's where one, the top face where the tissue comes out, and the side face meets. It's on a three-dimensional shape, and that's the edge. It's where two faces meet. The face is just one part of a three-dimensional shape. It can't curve, it has to be flat. And a point is where all three of those meet. Uh, it doesn't have to be just three squares or three rectangles that come together. A cone could also have a point on it. Pretty straightforward if it's a point. It's not just putting together two and three dimensional shapes, it's also taking apart shapes. So give them a shape, ask them to decompose it. Decompose is just making something new from cutting something apart. It might look something like this. Start off with this rectangle, which is a square, square is a special rectangle, and give me two skinny rectangles. They just created two new shapes from that one original shape. Do you think they'd also be able to make two triangles? Again, these are just ways you can continue having students explore with shapes. Please do not just tell your students, look at that photograph in your book. That is a triangular prism. Make one, build one, bring one in, bring examples from home, have them bring examples in from home, and just hold it up. This is a three-dimensional shape. This is a triangular prism. And please, please, please use the correct terms. Instead of saying just, this is an oval, yes, they're going to hear this is an oval for all of elementary school, but also in primary, introduce them to the correct terminology. That is an ellipse. When they get to high school, ellipse should not be this new scary vocabulary. They should say, oh yeah, I learned that when I was four years old. Of course that's an ellipse. Look at that shape. Think about what, what that is. You'd probably say in primary, that's a diamond. Also, it's a parallelogram. Not only is it incredibly fun to hear a four-year-old try and say parallelogram, not only does it impress parents when they go home and say, I learned about a parallelogram, but it, it builds this solid foundation so that, again, when students progress through more advanced geometry in high school and college, they'll look at that and say, yeah, oh, you know, I've known about parallelogram since kindergarten. No problem. That's our first one. That's a, a pretty big standard, and that's what I talked about. It's just the tip of the iceberg. One of my favorite parts of teaching math to young students is the second standard specifying locations, describing spatial relationships. You can do most of this outside on the playground. It's, it's fantastic. Talking about relative positions, I would take my students out and they get to go to recess when they can describe where I am and where they are compared to me. So I might stand far away from the playground structure, and they'll say, I am above you. I am far away from you. I might crawl under, which just blows the minds of kindergartners. A teacher standing under a playground structure? Oh my goodness! They love it. Um, they flip out, and then they walk. Inevitably, they'll stand right above you, and they'll say, I'm above you. 
and then I'll ask, where am I? And they'll say, you're below me. It's that relative position, and then I would say, I'm below you, you're above me. That's huge, and if we don't model that, if we don't have lessons like that, students don't understand how location can be relative. So here's the playground lesson. There's Alan. I'll have him just walk through before he gets to go to recess. He's on the third step. He's climbing up and leaning out. And this is what he would be saying or what I would model for him. He's at the top of the slide and he's underneath the play structure. That is basically the second standard in kindergarten. It's powerful, students love it because you're out on the playground and they're learning it. They might not even realize they're learning it until you label this as geometry. They'll say, wow, geometry's fun, I love math. And the answer is yes, yes you do. Let's look at directions, look at distance. How far away is that lady from that trash can? Again, that's geometry. It can be relative, she's pretty close, or it can be a specific measurement, she is six feet away from that trash can. But developing the, these ideas, these concepts about distance and about direction, you can tell just by this picture, she's moving away from the trash can. So if I had taken a picture two seconds later, she'd be seven feet away from that. With Google Maps on pretty much every device, most of your phones have maps on them. Most of your classrooms either have computers or are going to have computers very quickly, even for young students. If you can find your school on Google Maps, students will love it. You can zoom out, point to, you know, there's the McDonald's. Kids flip out, oh, McDonald's, look where it is. And you can say, all right, that's to the right. You can start to introduce directions, northeast, south, and west. And we can start specifying locations on a coordinate system. My classroom was in B3. A3, B3, right in there. So I'd walk students through and explain, all right, here's the beginning where you first come into school. Here's the playground we have. Where is this compared to where we are? And then we're in A3, we're in B3. Where's the huge field where we have the handball court? That's in B2. Again, this is coordinate systems. Great way to demonstrate location. And again, this is geometry. Students a little bit higher up get a more complicated coordinate system. See that recycling one? What's the coordinate of that? And this would be third, maybe fourth grade. That's H4. All right, where's the baseball diamond? All sorts of lessons you can do with this. You can just throw this right into uh, presentation software like PowerPoint, pretty easily do it, or Excel and Keynote, um, numbers, just anything where you can draw lines. Find that image, save that image, add a coordinate system to it. Again, that second one's probably one of my favorites to teach, so much fun, and students love it. And unless you say, this is a geometry standard, we're talking about specifying locations, they're probably not even gonna realize they're learning math. Symmetry to me is the biggest part of this third standard, applying transformations. So sliding. Let's talk about some in and out fries. If we're sitting at a table and the fries are in front of me, I might hand them to you, I might just slide them to you. Right? Just pushing them across the table is sliding them. A flip is not what we'd want to do with fries. It's where you'd flip it upside down, the fries are on the table, and that's gross. A turn is when you rotate it, which really doesn't make a difference with fries. Either it's lengthwise or widthwise, but that would be a turn. You could do this with a tissue box and have a, a really great lesson with your students understanding what slides, flips, and turns are. Symmetry is my, definitely my favorite part of this third standard, applying transformations. I would start off by just introducing a handful of photographs with students. All these different ones that are symmetrical. Do you see the symmetry in that? Students go, that's a flower. But yeah, it's, it's also symmetrical. You could have them draw the second half of a rectangle to show symmetry. Butterflies are always a, a great way. Butterflies are symmetrical. You cut that out on poster board, 
have them color in one side, have it be symmetrical. The symmetry is all around us. This one's almost symmetrical. Can you figure out what this one is? Yes, it is Starbucks. Sometimes it's close to symmetrical, and these are also good conversations to have with students. Again, symmetry is, is everywhere. And I would just show something like this to my students to introduce the concept of symmetry. Here are some letters that are symmetrical. The axis of symmetry is sometimes vertical, sometimes it's horizontal. So the letter A has a vertical axis of symmetry. The letter B has a horizontal axis of symmetry. And finally, our fourth standard, visualization. This one's one you just tend to practice throughout a school year, not necessarily, all right, we're going to work on visualization today. But it's just being able to create kind of this, this mental picture of what a shape looks like. So maybe you'll show it to them, hide it from them, have them think about it, and then give them two choices. Was it this cylinder, or was it this rectangular prism? and they need to choose, all right, it was this shape, it was the cylinder, because I, I had it in my head. If you're a fan of Friends, um, Joey had a, a tough time visualizing stuff, and guess what he had to do? That's London, baby! That's London, baby. <laughs> all right, the hotel's here. The hotel's here. Wait, wait. No, we want to no, go. We want to go. <laughs> no. no. I know. I know. I'm going to have to go into the map. <laughs> Okay, if you see a little okay, version of me in there, kill it. There. I got it. There we go. There we go. Okay, listen, listen, we're not going to have to walk this way the entire time, are we? Oh, man, you made me lose it. So hopefully our students are not like Joey having to walk around with a map holding it at the correct angle. They're able to start visualizing where they are location-wise. If you're ever moving around your campus, you can start just by announcing the direction. We're traveling east. Or spin around, all right, which way do we go for lunch? We need to go that way, that way south, let's go that way. It's just starting to, to be able to visualize where things are located compared to you. Often we do not look at shapes from different angles, or if we do, we don't really address that in the classroom. Now this is a huge one if you're sitting around in carpet time, showing them what a rectangular prism is. Because if you don't move that shape, let's say you have a cereal box, if you're holding it directly at a student, they're gonna look at it, and if they don't see the depth to it, they'll think that a rectangle is a rectangular prism. It has to be just the shape. But if you're moving it around, showing them at different angles, rotating it, flipping, turning it, sliding it, students are gonna see, okay, now I understand what a rectangular prism is. It can look like this, or this, or this. Maybe you go around and you take photographs of students from different angles, like a bird's eye view, really low, really high. Maybe you take photographs of different geometric shapes from different angles, take it really close from above, from the side, rotate it and take a picture of it, flip it, take a picture of it. So the students begin to understand that a shape retains the same qualities of it completely different from where we are. We can be somewhere and the shape is still the shape it is. We can move, that shape is the same shape. And students surprisingly struggle with this. They think that that shape only looks like that shape if they are where they are often. So I could show you this photograph I took of the Vatican, and then we can go to Google Maps and look at it differently. We could look at the picture of these palm trees, and that's what it looks like looking straight up. Okay, those are palm trees. I never thought about looking at it from that way. Students will often look at macaroni and cheese just straight on as they're eating it, but here's another picture of it. Again, it's just, it's a different perspective, it's a different angle. They even start to pull out some shapes and say, all right, that almost looks like a triangle, even though it's just a line in the road. So different shapes are going to look different to them, and they need to understand here's what those shapes are. If I take a look at this cylinder, if I look at it directly from above, it's going to look like a different shape. It's going to look like a circle. And even just angles, 
and directions, those are different. Is my friend Brent going to our left? Well, that's our left, that's his right. And that gets incredibly confusing for students, even you know, fifth graders, hold up your left hand. And if I'm holding up my left hand, they're gonna hold up their right hand. So just talking about directions, relative directions, completely different. We're starting to slowly get into measurement here. This is our, our fourth strand, but it definitely applies to geometry. So you didn't know until I threw that number at you if that was three inches or if that was 300 inches. If it was a scale model, if it was life size. So height, length, width, compared to other things, makes a big, big, big difference. And look at some of these shapes. If you're going outside and playing with your students, there's shapes everywhere. Use this opportunity to look at that hula hoop. If I take a picture of it, now it looks like an ellipse, doesn't it? So take the picture of the student, show it to them, that's me! And then they'll get past that and say, hey, that's an ellipse, but if I look at it this way, it's a circle. If you look at the picture on the right, play structures have shapes everywhere. So go on a shape hunt. Walk down your hallway, go on your play structure, find all these different shapes. So let's do a couple together. You can find just some abstract photos. This is of a ceiling. Think about what shapes you see. You see the triangle there in the shadows? Squares, parallelograms, all sorts of shapes. Just a ceiling light burned out. Triangles, squares, rectangles. I see one ellipse in there that's kind of hidden. And students will love this, just spending time with this just up on the projector, going on a shape hunt with different pictures. This one has lots of pictures. Again, it doesn't have to be just, this is a triangle, this is a rectangle. Take pictures of things that you like, photographs you enjoy. Take pictures of things around your classroom. Now, students might call that a diamond, but if you either rotate the projector or them rotate their heads, they'll see actually those are just squares. And they, if they say rectangle, they're also right, because that's just a square is a special rectangle. So I would correct them if that was a diamond because the shape of that, if you look directly up, it's not a diamond. Just stuff around. Colleges is a great place also to, to take different photos, share with them, even looking straight down at a crosswalk. All sorts of different shapes. Kids will flip out if you can project onto not a screen, but project onto a whiteboard. They can come up and circle or color in the different shapes. Circles, triangles, rectangles, shapes within shapes, it's, it's incredibly exciting for students. They love it. Uh, that's our fourth standard. This was our geometry strand. Uh, please continue to read through the NCTM strands. And uh, if you have any questions, feel free to email me, 448 at billselleck.com.